Here's the best stock plugins that are free with FL Studio. You'll be able to achieve pretty decent vocals using this strategy. So I'm going to add the effects and then I'll show an example after. So you always want to start out with your vocal by going to the audio clip, left clicking and opening it, and then right clicking on the audio clip, edit an audio editor, and I've already done it but you just want to select an area that has the background noise only. Right click on this toothbrush, acquire the noise profile, scroll out and then select everything and then left click on the toothbrush and then it'll clean up all of that background noise. So you just click accept and then drag it back into your playlist. Then after you do that, you can either do some manual tuning first using new tone or you could add picture which is the free fo studio auto tune so make sure you set your key and your scale and then choose the speed if it's fast it's going to sound really robotic and wobbly and probably not good and if it's slow it won't be as noticeable there's also extra features that you're able to apply and then a fine tuning setting as well as you're able to disable or enable certain notes and bypass them as well so this is a very useful auto tune plugin but the downside comes where its actual sound output doesn't sound as good as Antares, for example. Next, I just have a subtractive EQ that's cutting out everything below 30 hertz. It's a high pass, and you can either make a shelf or a complete cutoff. I did the cutoff. And then a slight boost at around 7,500 hertz, and that'll help bring out more of the crispy and the nice frequencies that we like to hear without overdoing it, obviously. Next, I have a de -esser. So this comes with Maximus. You just go to the presets, and then you could choose split band, which I have enabled here, or narrow band. And this will help to get rid of those sibilant frequencies, especially in the S's. And then another EQ, just kind of picking out certain frequencies that I thought were resonant. A really good alternative to this would be Soothe 2 or any type of sibilance remover plugin. Then next, I have my first limiter. This is just capturing those peak sounds that I want to lower so that the second threshold can capture all of the sounds easier. So fast attack, around 100 millisecond release, a really high knee and ratio in the threshold. Just make sure that you're getting it right at those peaks. And then the second limiter is going to be less ratio, less knee, a slightly longer attack, and around the same release. And the threshold is going to be able to capture those sounds evenly better. Next, I threw in a bit of sound geyser just as a joke. But for real though, this does actually provide decent saturation. And if you didn't know, it is a Maximus preset. It's just cooler and easier to use sound geyser and everybody knows about it. Next, I added another fruity limiter, which has saturation included. I could have done this at another one, but I just wanted to show it as its own thing for the sake of the example, because I wanted to single it out as it can be its own saturator if you don't have an alternative, which we have one right here, which is fruity wave shaper. And you just kind of bring up this curve and then you can mix it in. If it's way too saturated, you probably don't want to have it all the way mixed in. And if it's just slightly saturated, I'd probably bring it back at least 30%. And with the autotune, some people like to do all of the subtractive stuff first. So they'll do that shelf, they'll do that de -esser, they'll get rid of any resonant frequencies, and then they'll put the autotune after that, or they'll put it first in the chain. Either way works, or in between, whatever. Just as long as the autotune is not the last thing, like after reverb or something like that, then you should be okay. But as long as it's before any additive effects, and I threw on about 70% of poly chorus, which I think sounds good with the stock fruity chorus plugin. So yeah, if you want to screenshot this box right here, that's the main effects aside from delay and reverb. So 31 is the reverb and then 32 and 33 are differently timed delays. So as you notice, I put an EQ at the top of each. I put a harsher EQ on the delay that repeats more so it's not as apparent and more in the background. And it's just getting rid of those higher and lower frequencies so that doubling doesn't muddy up the actual recording that we're trying to focus on. And the reverb just has a high pass or a low shelf and a slight dip at about 13,000 hertz. Obviously, these are all customizable settings, but I do recommend that you guys have a similar arrangement of your plugins so that you don't accidentally forget that a concept is useful, especially when it's necessary, and you might overlook that. So again, I'm just going to go through them all to explain what these preliminary effects are so that it's easier to understand. So for the longer delay, I put quite a harsh threshold and ratio on a compressor, which is going to duck down the frequencies before they get through the delay. So that means that the frequencies that are going to repeat more will be the ones where there aren't any words. 
All right, now we can get to the reverb. So basically, just make sure you have your dry level all the way at zero. If it's not, then it's going to double the original vocal, and you're not going to want that. You just want the wet effects. So I think that with Fruity Reverb, a great preset is Cathedral. It sounds like a really wide and magical place, I guess you could say, and is just a, a really good one. Just make sure that you utilize the equalization within the fruity reverb so you don't actually need to remember every time for reverb specifically and this plugin specifically and i'd always recommend that you enable this tempo so that the reverb is matching your music so yeah the wet effect will will determine how loud the effects are and i have a video explaining pretty much everything else if you want to get into that just look up quantize reverb and then i have the first delay and the input is the amount of signal that's being inputted. So that's the volume of that. The feedback is the volume. So the amount of times it's going to repeat. And the cutoff is how quickly will it fade away, pretty much with the frequency sweeping. The timing is really important. Again, so just make sure that the knob is lined up to one of the dots. That'll help so that it matches to the tempo. And if it's not, then it probably won't sound good. That's why purchasing certain plugins like H-Delay will give you more versatility with how you utilize the plugin, especially the timing. Or you could use Fruity Delay 3. And again, just make sure you have the dry input at zero because you don't want to have any doubling of the same vocal. It'll just make it way louder and it'll introduce new phase issues that you don't want. On the delay, I added a splash of reverb. This just helps to give it more of a lush feeling. And I did the same thing with that reverb on the second delay, which is just a longer decay time. As you can see with this time knob, instead of at two, it's at four compared to this one. Once you start actually playing with the knobs and seeing what works and like what does what and how it affects the vocal or whatever you're applying it to, then you'll start to kind of understand what needs to be done like a puzzle to complete the final result and make it sound pretty much as good as you can make it sound. So yeah, the key takeaway from this is just make sure that your timing is correct and the dry volume knob is all the way down on all of the channels that you have the original vocal tracked to so it doesn't repeat the dry vocal. And aside from that, autotune, EQ, and the compressor are the three most important next to saturation. This vocal actually already has tuning and a few other effects already applied, so I just kind of added on to that. But you could definitely tell that there's a difference. Give it a listen. You didn't think I'd be here waiting up all night, uh, uh, all night. I'm here to tell you something. There ain't another love that is gonna hold you down like mine. And this is after. You didn't think I'd be here waiting. Up all night, uh, uh, all night I'm here to tell you something There ain't another love That is gonna hold you down like mine With the beat, it'll definitely be more noticeable With how the autotune is affecting the vocal Make sure you drop a like and follow for more